Hello everyone and welcome back to another deep dive into the fascinating world of physics. Today, I'm going to unravel one of the most intriguing concepts in modern physics gauge theory. In the simplest terms, gauge theory is a type of theory in physics that describes physical forces in terms of fields. Think about the electromagnetic field or even the gravitational field. These fields are all around us, but we can't directly measure them. Instead, we measure associated quantities like charges, energies and velocities. Now let's talk about gauge transformations and gauge invariance. In physics terms, a gauge transformation is a shift from one configuration to another that doesn't change the measurable outcomes, showcasing what we call gauge invariance or gauge symmetry. A classic example is electromagnetism. You can observe the electric field and the magnetic field, but you can't directly measure the potentials. With the rise of quantum mechanics in the 1920s and the evolution of quantum field theory, the role of gauge transformations became even more crucial. Gauge theories impose constraints on the laws of physics because any changes induced by a gauge transformation must cancel out in observable terms. Over the 20th century, physicists gradually realized that all fundamental forces arise from constraints imposed by local gauge symmetries where transformations vary across space and time. Perturbative quantum field theory, often used for scattering theory, describes these forces through force-mediating particles known as gauge bosons. The nature of these particles is determined by the nature of the gauge transformations. The culmination of these efforts is the standard model, a quantum field theory that predicts all the fundamental interactions except gravity. Quantum electrodynamics and the standard model of elementary particle physics are prime examples. The starting point of a quantum field theory is quite similar to that of its continuum analog, a gauge covariant action integral that characterizes allowable physical situations according to the principle of least action. However, continuum and quantum theories differ significantly in how they handle the excess degrees of freedom represented by gauge transformations. In continuum theories, a gauge-fixing prescription is used to reduce the orbit of mathematical configurations that represent a given physical situation to a smaller orbit related by a smaller gauge group, often the global symmetry group or even the trivial group. More sophisticated quantum field theories, especially those involving a non-abelian gauge group, break the gauge symmetry within the techniques of perturbation theory by introducing additional fields known as fedeev popov ghosts and counterterms motivated by anomaly cancellation. This approach is known as BRST quantization. In quantum mechanics, a particle such as an electron is also described as a wave for example, if the double-slit experiment is performed with electrons, then a wave-like interference pattern is observed. The electron has the highest probability of being detected at locations where the parts of the wave passing through the two slits are in phase with one another, resulting in constructive interference. The frequency of the electron wave is related to the kinetic energy of an individual electron particle via the quantum mechanical relation E equals HF. But what happens when we introduce electric or magnetic fields into the equation? This brings us to the fascinating phenomenon known as the Aharonov-Bohm effect. Imagine our double-slit experiment, but now suppose that the electrons are subject to an electric or magnetic field. For instance, if an electric field is imposed on one side of the axis but not the other, the results of the experiment are dramatically affected. The part of the electron wave passing through the side with the electric field oscillates at a different rate since its energy has had negative electron volt added to it, where negative is the charge of the electron and V the electrical potential. In classical physics, the concept of gauge symmetry finds its roots in electromagnetism. Historically, the first instance of gauge symmetry was discovered in classical electromagnetism. Imagine a static electric field which we describe using an electric potential, often referenced to the Earth as the zero level. However, only differences in potential are physically measurable, which is why a voltmeter needs two probes to measure voltage differences. This leads to an intriguing insight that if the potential V is a solution to Maxwell's equations, then after a gauge transformation, the new potential equals V plus C, where C is a constant. This means that the laws of physics governing electricity and magnetism are invariant under this gauge transformation, highlighting the gauge symmetry of Maxwell's equations. 
Taking this further, we introduce the magnetic vector potential A. Similar to the electric potential, A can undergo gauge transformations. These transformations can be local, meaning they can vary across space and time. Gauge symmetry also connects intimately with charge conservation. Imagine a hypothetical process where charge conservation is momentarily violated by creating and destroying a charge Q. This scenario, while conserving energy, would violate gauge symmetry because it allows measurement of absolute potential, which contradicts gauge symmetry's requirement that no experiment should measure absolute potential without an external reference. In the realm of general relativity, gauge transformations take the form of arbitrary coordinate transformations. These transformations must be smooth and invertible. A classic example of symmetry in physical theory is translation invariance introduced by Galileo and Newton where physical laws remain unchanged regardless of where or when an experiment is conducted. Consider two observers, one on Earth and one on the Moon, examining hydrogen atoms. Both will find identical properties demonstrating translation invariance. This principle extends to time, ensuring that physical laws remain consistent across the universe and throughout time. Einstein's general relativity further extends gauge invariance. Coordinates like x, y, z and t become arbitrary, and the form of Einstein's field equations remains unchanged under any coordinate transformation, a property known as general covariance. This makes general covariance a special case of gauge invariance, applicable to both Maxwell's equations and Einstein's field equations. The earliest field theory having a gauge symmetry was Maxwell's formulation in 1864-65 of electrodynamics, a dynamical theory of the electromagnetic field. The importance of this symmetry remained unnoticed in the earliest formulations. Similarly unnoticed, Hilbert had derived Einstein's equations of general relativity by postulating a symmetry under any change of coordinates just as Einstein was completing his work. Later, Hermann Weyl, inspired by success in Einstein's general relativity, conjectured incorrectly, as it turned out, in 1919, that invariance under the change of scale or gauge, a term inspired by the various track gauges of railroads, might also be a local symmetry of electromagnetism. Although Weyl's choice of the gauge was incorrect, the name gauge stuck to the approach. After the development of quantum mechanics, Weil, Fock and London modified their gauge choice by replacing the scale factor with a change of wave phase and applying it successfully to electromagnetism. Gauge symmetry was generalized mathematically in 1954 by Chen Ning Yang and Robert Mills in an attempt to describe the strong nuclear forces. This idea, dubbed Yang-Mills theory, later found application in the quantum field theory of the weak force and its unification with electromagnetism in the electroweak theory. This gauge theory, known as the standard model, accurately describes experimental predictions regarding three of the four fundamental forces of nature. Yet, the story doesn't end here. Unlike the point-like particles in the standard model, string theory posits that the fundamental constituents of the universe are one-dimensional strings that vibrate at different frequencies to manifest as various particles. String theory's mathematical beauty and consistency have led to the discovery of intriguing concepts such as extra dimensions and dualities. However, string theory remains largely untested as its predictions often lie beyond the reach of current experimental capabilities. Parallel to string theory, other approaches like loop quantum gravity and the holographic principle offer alternative pathways to understanding the fabric of space-time. As we conclude our video in theoretical physics, gauge theory from the electromagnetism and the standard model to the string theory and beyond, the journey is far from over and the future of theoretical physics is bright.